ません。Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I greet all of you in the joy of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. To all of those that are watching through Facebook Live on all platforms, and to even those that are listening by way of conference call, we greet you in his name. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, bless this time of study and bless this time in your word. May your word Allow this moment to transform us as only it can. Transition us into a place that only you, yourself, O oh Lord, can get us to. In Jesus' name, amen. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 26. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter, okay, that ain't Matthew. Matthew chapter 26, beginning at verse 36. He, the word of God. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. And then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take the rest later on. See, the hour is at hand that the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be Go and see a betrayer is at hand. I want to encourage us from these words on tonight. I don't want to do this anymore. I just don't want to do this anymore. Okay. On the onslaught of this lesson, please bear with my transparency. I'm not going too far, but you're going to get the gist of where I'm going in just a moment. I am mad as hell. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. I do not want to do this anymore. These are sayings of individuals who have become depressed, discouraged, and down in the dumps because the current reality does not look like what it should be. Okay. It's these moments that haunts us with feelings of worthlessness, it clouds our hope, causes us to doubt our faith. We lose our energy to the point where we have dark days, dark nights, can't sleep, and it's unraveling spiritual, physical, and emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. This is no respect of persons. Anyone at any age or stage of life can easily become depressed. Depression mm -hmm. is a silent killer, a mm -hmm. silent terrorist attack that attacks those in the church mm -hmm. and even those outside of the church. Mm -hmm. And those outside of the church seems to accept this reality and find good and creative ways to cope. Mm -hmm. But even throughout the scripture, there were men and even some women who struggled with depression. Mm -hmm. Isaiah said it's like being undone. Jeremiah says, I wish I'd never been born. Moses asked God to blot him out of the book of life. And Jonah said that death was better than life. And Job's struggles are a continuing saga that bears through his name. Mm -hmm. But here in this text, mm -hmm. after the shouts of Hallel hymns, 
They go to the Mount of Olives, headed into the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. Jesus foretold that he was going to deny the Lord. And now we enter into a time of intense prayer. That was Peter who was going to deny the Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes, sir. And now he's in despair because he don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are moments mm -hmm. that tragedy, mm -hmm. that triumph will lead in the tragedy. Yes, sir. There are moments when burdens will lead into some breakthroughs. Yeah. But even when we're facing strenuous and struggling situations, we must be encouraged. Mm -hmm. If you don't get anything from tonight, when you don't want to do it, you can get through it. Wow. That's because good. the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than mm -hmm. he that is in the world. That's right. Matthew 26 and verse 36 says, mm -hmm. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Let me stop right there. He went to a place called Gethsemane. When you don't want to do this, you have to, first of all, go to a specific place. Yes. He goes to a place called Gethsemane, and Gethsemane means the oil press, and the oil press within an olive grove. It was on the western slopes of the Mount of Olives, and it was at this place called Gethsemane that there was a field with covered olive trees, and oil presses was used to extract oil from the fruit. Gotcha. Gethsemane was a place where olives was pressed in order to produce oil. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, my beloved brothers and sisters, when you hit that point, when you hit that breaking point, sometimes you got to go to the press so you can be productive. Yes. Some stuff got to be pressed out of you mm -hmm. so that the Lord can produce something within you. Yeah. Because what comes out of you mm -hmm. is greater than what is, is also greater than what's inside of you. Yes, sir. But not only must you understand that you got to go to a specific place, mm -hmm. but you also have to understand that you go also, secondly, to a, watch the text, and taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, mm -hmm. he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Yeah. Which leads us to the next point that you don't have to go. When you don't want to do this, there will be some sympathetic partners. Mm. And when he gets to this place called Gethsemane, the Bible says he only takes Peter, James, and John with him. Mm -hmm. And while he was facing rejection, Grieving and at the point of distress and felt the pain of agonizing death. Jesus told the disciples to sit where they were to watch and pray. Mm -hmm. Because it was in that very moment yeah. he needed some sympathetic partners to be with him. Yeah. And when you're going through agony, going through misery, going through your worst day, going through moments of distress and grief, you don't need just any and everybody with you. You need some people that can be supportive, some people that will watch with you, pray with you, and be right, right. there. Right. What the Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. That yeah, when yeah. Jesus was hurting, they was there. When Jesus was going through they was there. Yeah. And sometimes you don't have to say anything. You don't have to say everything. Sometimes all you have to do is just be there. It reminds me, as a pastor, I always teach my sons and daughters in the gospel that when you go visit the sick or go visit somebody who is bereaved, the best ministry and the best thing that you can do for somebody is not say a scripture, not mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. say a prayer, but just be, be there. Sometimes being there in the worst of times and the best of times mm -hmm. is the best thing that you, my brothers and my sisters, can do. But then Unfortunately, not only must you understand that you go to that specific place and you need sympathetic partners, but understand this, you will go through severe pain. Mm. I don't want to go through this, but I got to go through severe pain. It's in the text because the Bible says, then he said to them, verse 38, mm -hmm. my soul is very sorrowful, even to death, remain here and watch with me. Mm -hmm. Love this child of God that Jesus 
in this particular text mm -hmm. is experiencing sh extreme and excruciating pain. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because the Bible declares he's sorrowful and troubled. Mm -hmm. Now, being sorrowful implies that he is sad. Mm -hmm. Being troubled means that he is in anxiety. Mm -hmm. Being sorrowful means that he is unhappy. Yeah. Being troubled implies overwhelmed with sorrow and burdens of his conscience mentally. Being sorrowful implies that he is distressed. And being sorrow implies that he's going through severe and emotional distress. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question wherever you're watching or listening from? Have you ever been there yeah. where you're sad? You got anxiety, you're mm. unhappy, you're mm. overwhelmed mm. with the situations and circumstances of your life. You're depressed, you're down, you're in a conundrum of confusion, and you're to the point that it's almost towards death and you're grieving. That even when you're in the midst of pain and agony, no matter how hurtful or painful it is, mm -hmm. just go through it. Mm -hmm. And what blesses me about this text, Pastor Joe, and even those watching and listening, mm -hmm. is this, that Jesus showcased his suffering so that the disciples can watch how to deal with this pain. Mm -hmm. And may I tell you, your depression, your anxiety, or the psychological disorder, or even other sicknesses that you may be going through yes, are sir. not just for you. They are for somebody else. That's good. That's good. I'm not trying to pick on Pastor Joe, but God bless his heart. He's gone through so much as a pastor, as a son, but through it all, he testifies through his life that this suffering is not about me, but it's all about the Jesus within me. Mm -hmm. That's right. And this That's suffering right. was not just for Jesus. It was for us. Mm. For our sake, him mm. who knew no sin became sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's the Bible. Sometimes what you're hurting and going through is not just for you. It's for somebody else. Yeah. Somebody need to see your grief. Mm. Somebody need to see your tears. Mm -hmm. Somebody need to see that you had your broken up season with your bay and your boo. Somebody need to see what you're dealing with. You can't hide and conceal some stuff. You need to tell some things. Transparency can help you before you go to therapy. Transparency can help you be real about some things. Transparency can help transform somebody else's life. It bothers me that the church of today is so, um, uh, what can I say? They're so incognito. Mm. Incognito Christians that want to hide everything that they do. Sometimes you got to just throw it all in the open and say, sometimes you're mad, sometimes you're frustrated, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you understand that I may be going through severe pain right now, mm -hmm. but in the end, God is going to bless me through it. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand that this is a specific place. This is sympathetic partners that will be with you. There is severe pain. I'm walking the text. This is Bible study tonight since you are in it. But you must understand that I don't want to do this will sometimes require you to be in sincere prayer. Now, there were some parts and some verses that I omittedly omitted. And I really did omit it for a reason. Because I want you to understand the premise of what the text is trying to say. Mm -hmm. Bible says in 36, sit here while I go over there and pray. 39 says, and going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed saying, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Verse 41, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, verse 42, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will will be done. Then verse 44, so leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Let me stop. Let me go back to what I'm trying to go to where now. Now, throughout the discourse of this Gethsemane experience, the emphasis is on prayer. 
that Jesus saw the need for quiet prayer and time along with the Father before the terrible ordeal that he was going to face. And after he tells the disciples to watch, he went to a solitary place and there he prayed. He fell on his face downward, stretched himself before the Father, and he adopted the lowliest posture which signifies humility and surrendering. And Jesus begins his prayer with a warm and tender approach, and he says what he taught his disciples for what they are supposed to say when they pray. He begins his prayer by talking to the Father. Mm. And that mm -hmm. blesses me yes, that before he faces abandonment, embarrassment, shame, and humiliation, Jesus knew that the Father is near. And when he gets before the Father, he stretches himself out before the Father, and he asks the Father, remove this cup from me. Mm. Now, the cup that Jesus was referring to was not a cup of wine. <laughs> it was not a cup of honey. It was not a cup of some of that white or other kind of brown liquor that y'all been drinking on. <laughs> say amen or say ouch, amen. <laughs> but Jesus was referring to a cup of wrath. Now, what is that cup of wrath? I'm, I'm going to go here. In the Old Testament, the cup is metaphorically for God's wrath because the imagery is picked up in the book of Revelation where John speaks of the judgment that should come to those who worship the beast. For they will drink the wine of God's wrath, which is mixed full strength in the cup of his anger. However, Jesus was not concerned with the Roman soldiers, nor was he a coward when he faced the Roman soldier. In fact, he was a savior about to experience and take on divine wrath. In other words, Jesus endured the wrath of the Father so that we might experience the love of the Father. And when Jesus goes to the cross, the full cup of God's wrath in our sins was poured out on his son. And Jesus endured our condemnation. Before the cross, we were afraid of God. But because of the cross, we are friends with God. His prayer requested was doing the will of God. His prayer does not focus on his wants, but his prayer Focus on doing the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. Three times mm -hmm. he asked the Lord to remove the cup. First time, Lord, remove the cup. Mm -hmm. Didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Second time, Lord, remove the cup. Didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Third time, Lord, remove the cup. Lord, didn't do it. No matter how many times you make a prayer request, mm -hmm. you got to understand God may not answer it. Mm -hmm. It may be you sometimes saying, Pastor, you mean to tell me that God don't always tell me yes? Of course he don't always tell you yes. Sometimes the greatest answer can be a no. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. That's good. That's good. That's it good. may be because he's trying to produce some strength into you so that you can be able to deal with what you're going through. Mm -hmm. The reality is you cannot impose what you want to happen. You got to accept, align, and adjust yourself to the will of the Father. Now, things may not be the way as they should. They may not be the way you want them, but it's the will of God. It doesn't line up to where it should be, but God will give you the strength to grin it, bear it, accept it, and go through it. But then there's something else in the text that I I'm, I just want to just drop in and then I'm going to the last thing and we'll be we'll be almost done. But that's the last thing. Two things I want to say that there was not only a specific place. There was not only a sympathetic partner. There was not only severe pain, sincere prayer. But then there was a stern punishment because mm -hmm. each time after Jesus prayed, he went back to his disciples. They were asleep the first time. Jesus reprimanded him, calmly saying, so you three can't sit here and watch with me for one hour, watch and pray. Second time, he said the same thing. Third time, he said the same thing. Because he really was saying to them, you need to wake up, be alert, be on God, guard so that you can pray to the Lord so that you'll be able to deal with this temptation and don't have to deal with this temptation. Mm. But the Bible said that he is the disappointed with this disciples. How is that? Because when he ends up going ahead that third time, mm. 
-hmm. He just tells them, just go ahead and sleep. First time, he said, wake up. Second time, wake up. But the third time, he said, just go ahead and sleep. Mm -hmm. Here's what I want to tell you. That just because people say something doesn't mean that they're going to stand behind what they say. Mm -hmm. Because a few verses earlier, Peter said, if I must die with you, I am not going to, even if I die with you, I am not going to deny you. Mm -hmm. But now you see Peter, James, and John sleeping on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Just because they say that they're going to do it don't mean that they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And while they were sleeping, Jesus is becoming less afraid, less vulnerable, and less painful. And mm -hmm. may I encourage you that that was a stern punishment. But here's the last thing, and I'm done. Not only is there a specific, pl specific place, not only is there sympathetic partners, not only is there severe pain, not only is there sincere prayer, not only was there stern, pun stern punishment, but here's the last thing and I'm done. You will be strengthened in the process. Okay. The Bible says in verse number 46. That's good. That's good. Verse 46. Rise, let us be going. See my betrayer is at hand. Now, how in the world can you be strengthened to go through the process? Here it is. While Jesus was while Jesus was praying, mm -hmm. they were sleeping. Mm -hmm. And after God denied his request, he became accepted to the will of the Father. That's right. But the Bible said, he said, rise, my betrayer is at hand. Yes, sir. And see, when you're going through and facing pressure, it will get to the point that it doesn't bother you as it should. Why? Because you will be strengthened to deal with. Mm -hmm. First time, prayed. Second time, prayed. Mm -hmm. And the third time, he prayed. Mm -hmm. Let me go back. First time, prayed, he was troubled. Second time, he prayed, he was troubled. But the third time he prayed, he was strengthened. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes the Lord has to take you through something so that he can be developed for what lies ahead. Mm -hmm. And sometimes God got to take you through some bitter situations so that it can make you better. Mm -hmm. He was able to deal with it. He went through it only because God has something greater on the other side. Yes, even sir. though he had to be marched to Judgment Hall from Judgment Hall, even though he was beaten, spat upon, and mocked, still carried up the Via Della Rosa to that hill called Calvary where he stretched his arms out and died for you and I. Mm -hmm. But that is not how the story ends. They, he rose victoriously early one Sunday morning with all power in his hand. That's why we can sing like that hymn writer once said, please, please be patient with me. Mm -hmm. God is not through with me yet. And may I encourage you that some, to that somebody that says, I don't want to go through this anymore. I can't take this pain. I want to encourage you. First of all, pray. But not only pray, go see a therapist, <laughs> a certified therapist. And after you see that certified therapist, mm -hmm. then get yourself together. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply. You can still be a Christian and see a counselor. Mm -hmm. That's my two cents. If anybody got any questions, I'm here for it. Praise God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we just ask for individuals that are battling with depression anxiety or any other things right now in the name of Jesus be a mind regulator yes God regulate their mind to the point to know that you are the therapist that can guide them to wherever they need to go let them know that when they are mad frustrated and tired they can receive what you need we ask your blessings upon this church this congregation this pastor, we ask your blessings upon the leading lady, and we ask that you continue to gird us and keep us in your care. We ask, O oh Lord, for forgiveness of sins known and unknown, and give us the strength that we need to continue to bear the burdens that we need them to be bearing. These things and many more that we ask in thy darling and beloved son, Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, today. Amen.